Hello, and welcome back to Whale Jaw 3D! My name is Mark Six, and in today's episode I'm going to show you how to design a livery from scratch. It's super easy. So let's delve into what a livery actually is. Basically, in a nutshell, it's an advertisement. A roll call to all the companies that help make that car happen. Companies will pay money to fund a motorsport team in return for advertisement in the form of, say, a livery. So with this knowledge in mind, we can start to build our livery's base structure. You need a base texture or pattern. This is usually linked to the brief. So let me quickly show you how to apply that texture to your model. So if you select the objects and go to texture paint, we need to then create a new texture for it basically. This menu here used to be over here. In my last video I taught you how to open it here but Blender 4.0 has decided to move it up here. And also if you what you also need to do is make sure you click the draw button so that you get all these options up here. So if we create a new texture now up here, a new base colour, 10,000 by 10,000, it's already picked the same colour which is Sandy and press OK. Now we've got our new texture here, look this one here. Now what we need to do is create a new texture. We need to make sure it's set to stencil as well. And if we go to this tab here where it says texture, we can then open our texture. So if we select our texture, import it, and then we go back up to this one up here, look, and we click image aspects. I always check it just in case. Now we can go into here, and this is why you've got to make sure you've got this drawer icon on, because we're basically stenciling it on now, yeah? If you hold shift, you can make it bigger. If you hold control, you can make it rotate. And we're using the right mouse button on this, yeah? When I design it, I always like to design it where there's an overlap there kind of thing in my editing suite. So once you've done that, you just need to brush stroke it all on. And there you go, you've got yourself the texture. So the next thing we need to tackle is the business logos. You need all the logos of the companies, ideally remade in cohesion of the theme. By this, I mean correcting the colours to match as well as converting them into high res images. Usually, you would have a title sponsor. The guy that pays the most or is just simply the top dog of the operation. This title sponsor would get a premium spot on the side of the car, predominantly the door or the bonnet. So let's give you a quick rundown on what you need to do with the logos in Photoshop. So if we drag in some some pictures, like this one, and resize it like that, and press enter, and we bring in, say, this one, resize it over here. So we've got like one black and white and one color. This is typically how you're gonna get them. Now, these are JPEGs, so if we turn this background off here, you can see the JPEGs, and we've got this white area that we don't want. We need to get rid of that, don't we? Now, usually, you, you aim to look for something called a PNG. It's basically, it's like a JPEG, but it also has, has something called an alpha layer, which means it can, it saves the transparency, yeah? And that's what we need. We want to convert these from JPEG to PNG. Now, I can bring in an example of a PNG, I think. This is a PNG, look. You see how it's got no background whatsoever? This is what we, we want, ideally. And what we also need to do is change the colors as well, don't we? So, I'm gonna show you how we can do that. So, if you press V, you can click on stuff and move them, yeah? So, we'll work on this one, the first one, yeah? Here's one way of separating this image. What I like to do is press W to get your magic wand up, and you click this here, look, and you click, and you click, and you click, 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 click. And you can basically select everything, but there's another way of doing it where you can click the white bit. Now obviously that's more economical because it grabs everything all in one. And what we need to do is delete this area. So if we press backspace, we can't do it. And the reason why we can't do it is because at the minute it's a smart object. You see this little white box around that? If we right click on it and click rasterize layer to just make it a straight up JPEG, we can then, because it's basically being instanced. So now it's just JPEG, we can press backspace and it'll delete all the white stuff. Now, if we turn this background on, double click it, press okay, and double click it again, and change the color of the background, we can see 
areas that have not been completed, you know what I mean? So, if you press space, you can move it around. Should make it full screen. You can see that if we look closely, sometimes what happens is, is you get like white artifacts that go around here. So what you can do to solve this is, it's actually not that bad on this image, but when you're selecting it, if you press select, are we on the right layer? Nope. So if you're selecting like that area, what you can do is go up here and click select and then modify and expand. And what I like to do is expand it by one or two pixels, depending on what you need. And then that will like chop out that like white fluffy edge that you always seem to get. And that's the trick to sorting that. And then once you've done that, there's also another way of doing it. We can just basically go in here and delete the white bits. And then once we've done that, if you press Control D, it will deselect as well. Then once we've done that, we can double click the layer and then basically put a color overlay on it. Yeah, obviously it's matching the one we've got. But in order to get rid of those white artifacts, you can just put a color overlay on it and it will basically sort it out. Now that's nice and easy, yeah? There's another way you can do this. And this is usually how I do it. So if we select this other layer here, because obviously we can't use the color overlay on this because it's a colored image. So we need to get it like spot on, don't we? So basically what we can do on this one is we can select this, select, 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 select. And that's likely gonna select the inside so it will kind of like not get that fluffy white edge. And what we can do here, because if you press control, copy, and then paste, typically when it pastes it, it moves it which this time it hasn't, but usually when you copy and paste, it'll move it to the middle and we don't want that. So what I usually do is if we go backwards, if we select everything like this, we can also press instead of control and paste, we can press control J and that will duplicate. And usually with a duplicate, it will duplicate it exactly in the same space. Whereas new Photoshop, it's obviously different now. So, so as we can see, We've got that one there, and we've got this one here now. And that's how you can easily separate the images. Now, once you've separated them, you need to then save these out as PNGs, basically. So what you need to do is turn off the backgrounds, and then if you're saving just one, turn off everything else as well. And what I like to do is press crop, even though it won't let you. So you press M for marquee, make a marquee like that, and then go to edit, I think it is, or image and click crop. It'll knock it down to this size so that we can press Control, Alt and S to save as, and then we can click here and select PNG there. And then name it, save it, and it'll have that transparent background for you. Yeah? It's, it's that simple. And then when you come back out, if you press Control, undo, makes it big again, switch them around, do the same, and then save them out. Yeah? And that's how you make your little logos. If you're wondering, just a little extra tip, if you're wondering how, let me just select it, if you're wondering how I got those gradients and things like that on it and outlines, it's, ba it's all in here basically. You can have a gradient, if you click stroke, you can have a stroke, if you want a shadow, you can drop a shadow. You know what I mean? It's it's all in here basically. So right then, just to wrap it up, once you've made all your logos, you can be, I like to do it this way, you could go into Blender and like individually paint every single one on, just change your texture and paint them on. But what I like to do is compile everything that's on a flat edge in Photoshop first because you're likely getting everything sized up anyway, you know what I mean? And it's already, it's already made, so you may as well just save it out as a whole image. So once I've compiled it all, I'll just basically do the same, save it as a PNG and then paint it on. But you do have an issue where if you're on like an edge that bends more than like 30 degrees, it will smear. So you will need to consider that. Sometimes you might have to put the stickers on individually. Yeah, hope this helps. I hope I didn't waffle too much. This is an extra step. The difference between professional and enthusiast. So, a little bit of spice. This can be some eye-catching artwork or logo of the title sponsor. If you're given free reign and have the space, you can use some fun artwork. But in most cases, the company logos will want the real estate. But sometimes, you can cut loose and make something real tasty. Obviously, you don't need to do step three, but this is a video tutorial about how I do it. And I ain't no professional. <laughs> I'm just a car, aren't I? So what do you do with a little bit of spice? Basically, so if we've got our base texture, which we talked about, 
So we want to add a little bit of spice and we're using, say, an anime girl. Yay! And uh, we want to like kind of blend that in, don't we? And we know the rule about the title sponsor and the logo, so if we put the logo in, there we go, we've blended in the anime girl. Now, uh, we could see we had a bit of a bold patch here. We could have got away with it, but I wanted a bit more, so... Obviously, it's a devil anime girl, so I put the old Mark of the Beast on the side, and that kind of like filled it out. Keep it in cohesion with all the colours and the themes and stuff. It was basically pink and purple. And I think I put a little Hot Wheels logo on it here because the person that I was making it for was into his Hot Wheels, you know what I mean? And it's that simple, really. There's your spice. Well, if it's professional, obviously you can't put the spice in because there's just too many company logos to fit on there, you know what I mean? They all want big space, but this is usually like an enthusiast kind of project. This is why you see it in Japan a lot, you know what I mean? It's just people love anime and they want to decorate the cars. Well, look, that should do it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more car stuff made in Blender. At a thousand subscribers, I'll consider giving away these models for free. Bye bye